Happy Saturday. Welcome to the stream. How's everyone doing? Hopefully everyone's doing okay or doing great. Um, I'm doing great. <laughs> I hope I hope I hope that matters. But anyways, hope everyone's doing okay. Uh, welcome to the stream. If if you're new to the stream, welcome. Thank you so much for being here on this Saturday. Uh, if you're if you're if you are new, um, this is a little bit different than what I typically do elsewhere. It's kind of a hey 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 General Ryan. Hey, thanks for the resub tier one 29 months. Thank you so much. I'll call him out right now since we're right here. Trevor, hey resub tier one 17 months 12 month streak. Thank you so much. Just casually going to set off Tim's alert before the stream. Uh, that's if they go off while offline. Also, I I still need to work on getting GitLab working CI/CD to auto deploy net cool rules yeah that that sounds awesome well thank you so much for the continued support dude i lude dude thank you so much i lude resub tier one 31 months thank you so much i lude how's it going you, you guys do enough already but thank you so much um yeah thank you uh cbn sandwich hey thanks resub tier one 10 months hey there how's it going thank you so much cbn sandwich uh and then there was one more yakto going going a little bit a ways back Yocto resub prime eight months six months streak dude thank you so much I appreciate it thank you thank you thank you okay so uh uh I'll call out the rest here and uh, we'll we'll keep going down the line uh Clint control Danny Low and Disastrophe thanks for the follow appreciate it. so anyways as I was saying if you're if you're new to the stream welcome thanks for being here um it's a little bit different a little bit more laid back well maybe not laid back just different than where I. <laughs> Uh, I post my content elsewhere. We talk about all the things we're excited about, things we're working on, uh, things you might be struggling with, all related to tech. So if you have something you want to share, throw it in chat, and uh, I will definitely try to get to it. I should, shouldn't should say definitely get to it because sometimes chat comes in so fast that I, I can't keep up. So anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll try my best. I'm going to try to keep on top of it today. Um, and then if you aren't new, thanks for, thanks for coming back. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, uh, thanks for spending your Saturday with me. Uh, Saturday, wow! I've I've had quite a Saturday already this morning. Uh, I woke up to uh, about six to eight inches of snow and slush. Uh, it started last night as rain, turned into sleet, then turned into snow, and it snowed all night. Uh, and then also woke up to the tree in the front of my house falling down across the road. So, <laughs> so our no one can go through our street right now because the tree out front crashed and fell, fell on top of the road. Hey, D Panesso, thank you so much. Uh, resub, tier one, 29 months, 29 month streak. Hey Tim, hope you're having a great day. I am having a great day. Got a little headache, but I, I'm doing good. I'm doing, I think it'll go away. I think it's one of those ones that'll, that'll go away eventually if I keep drinking water. I know why I got it because I was out there shoveling. My wife and I were shoveling everything and it's like the heaviest snow ever. And now on top of that, the tree fell and so, it's uh it's uh it's it's not my tree it's a, it's a tree that's been debated about a long time throughout this neighborhood between whoever lived here previously and whoever my previous neighbors were they they i heard they didn't they didn't agree on whose tree it was uh always and and you would get a different answer depending on who you asked whose tree it was uh but but we know whose tree it is because uh they actually had uh the property measured before the house sold and they said it's their tree anyways long story short i don't care whose tree it is it's it fell down and it's a it's an old willow tree if you know anything about willow trees uh they they i think they get infested easily they rot easily and then they're so heavy with all of their weeping willows their their branches that fall down like they, they'll just fall and crumble so <laughs> that's what happened to this one this one's been dying for 10 years and it finally fell down and it fell down straight across the street exactly how i thought it would fall if it were to fall fell just like that but the thing that surprised me is that all the branches uh held it up so it's it's actually about <laughs> i don't know four or five feet off the ground and people are like walking under it i'm like hey you probably don't want to walk under that anyways <laughs> enough about trees and snow uh that was not the worst of the weather that i think uh the at least here in the u.s we've seen like all through the midwest tornadoes and storms and lots of tornadoes and lots of bad weather so hopefully after the storm passes, everybody's okay and then uh then then maybe spring now we'll see <laughs> so hopefully on into spring so anyways uh yeah so that's that's weather it's it's been pretty exciting i think it's been pretty exciting the 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 in between I, I like the in-between seasons and then I like the edge of each season. So as it, you know, turns from, you know, winter to spring, 
uh, or it turns from fall to winter or even summer to fall. Like I like the in between <laughs> uh, seasons, and then I like the in between of the seasons too. I, I don't know, maybe it's because I like change. Who knows? Who knows why? So, anyways, um, yeah. So outside of that, so let's talk tech. Uh, I've been working on something. You might have seen it on, on Twitter. I've, I, 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 uh, I have a new device. Uh, Protectly sent me a device to kind of play with, and uh, I think they're pretty cool, and I got something I want to share with you guys here. I, I hope to have – oh, I'll just say I, I will have it out this week unless something happens. So, anyways, it's it's a it's a pretty awesome device. It's actually running back there. It's actually – it's actually running uh, – not running the stream, but streaming the stream back there uh, because I didn't have enough time to set up what I usually set up up there. So it's actually connected to that device back there, uh, displaying me on that monitor back there because I was testing something to make sure that my video drivers were working right. Anyways, uh, so cool stuff coming. I, I think it's cool, um, and I hope you do too. So anyways, let's uh, let's get into chat. Like I said, if, if you got something you want to share, you you got something you want to ask me, throw it in there. Let's, let's talk tech. This is our one time, at least my one time this week to nerd out about home lab stuff, about home networking, about home servers, about infrastructure, you name it, whatever, whatever we want to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, lights. Thank you. So speaking of lights, as you see, whoa, light mode. Uh, if, if, if you're wondering, Hey, why, what the heck is going on? Why did the lights change in his, uh, in his room? Well, there's this thing called channel points. They're down below. You can spend channel points. They're free and you can spend them to change the lights in my room might not always work <laughs> so because it's all code i wrote uh, uh connected to my house if it does not work i have a button panel right here that i can press <laughs> on a web page so in a docker container that i wrote myself so anyways let's uh let's get into chat let's uh answer first uh first let's answer who was here first i know who was here first because i saw it but it always gets covered up but i did see it oh it was random earring it was uh and it was like 45 minutes before the stream started so <laughs> so yeah thanks for being here man how's it going um and then we get into me testing oh trevor saying hey i i think you might be first trevor was not first um trying to match these up um trevor uh, i guess this will be the first time i caught the stream right at the beginning yeah man yeah you you did make it right here at the beginning there we go there we go so yeah you did make it right here at the beginning right before i uh when when i was testing my own commands and then everyone else is testing the commands too yes of course banana still works gear works they all work they all work for sure <laughs> if you see that that means it's working Ooh, this light mode oh I'm, I'm glad i got my hat on today <laughs> hat forward on today because because light mode um i might be squinting <laughs> my eyes are so sensitive to light uh, a lot of people think i just am like that i love like dark mode for just because it's a dark color or dark or a lack of color i guess i should say but it's not that at all it's because my eyes are like my eyes are really sensitive to like bright lights like <laughs> for some reason uh maybe maybe you you feel that way too but anytime i have you know a, a big white screen on i'm just like ah, i, I want to squint which is not good for my eyes and everything else but anyways so anyways when i when i when i'm super excited about dark mode coming to things like proxmox and maybe longhorn if i ever write that code um it's because uh it's because my eyes are super sensitive and i'll get headaches too so anyways enough about me let's uh let's talk about y'all <laughs> uh, i'm gonna say y'all a lot more hey speaking of y'all cyber night hey y'all how's it going what's up cyber night cyber night doing some deployments and tinkering with stuff i i hear you that's exactly what i'm doing Doing some deployments and tinkering with stuff. I'm I'm tinkering too. It's been uh, it's 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 been nice. It's been nice tinkering. Um, as you know, I, I I go back and forth all the time between infrastructure, between software, between containers, between code and hardware. And it, it's nice when you do something you know that's all software for a long time. It's nice to get to switch back to hardware. And that's what I'm doing this last week is uh, focusing on some hardware stuff, which is which is pretty fun. It's it's fun. I feel like I make progression when i have physical things that i can touch and do i'm like yes i made a lot of progress but meanwhile i could write you know whatever 20 20 000 lines of code and i'm just like oh i don't feel like i did too much today <laughs> anyways uh yeah after after my cloudflare slash uh terraform uh software uh project i i had to switch back to hardware because it was like man this is this is beating me up all the software uh nice how about yourself we're all doing good we're all doing good Trevor, 
Uh, I am at work, uh, but once I get off work, I'm going to work on getting some GitLab CI/CD working with my NetCool probes, uh, so that when I make a change to the rules, it automatically deploys the new rules and refreshes the rules on the probe. Awesome! That is awesome. I'm I'm a huge fan, huge fan. I, that's that's what I've been doing with my Kubernetes stuff. That's what I'm starting to do with a lot of my Terraform stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan, uh, and you know, for, for, for many reasons. And actually I saw there's a, there's a Terraform provider for, for pie hole that I was thinking about using. Talk about like, you know, uh, <laughs> home meets enterprise. Uh, there's actually a provider for that too. So I, yeah, I'm a huge fan of, of keeping your, your, your infrastructure's code whenever you can. Um, it's not that I don't like clicking buttons. It's just, it's, I don't know. I like working in VS code or a text editor. I like working in the terminal. And anytime I can commit, you know, some some code or configuration to a Git repo and have history on that and deploy that and have some other mechanism deploy that out to my infrastructure, I'm all in. I'm all in. Sure, it's it might take a little bit, you know, longer than clicking the button to save something in a UI, but at the same time, then I then I get history, then I can get find all, I can search, I can compare, I can apply you know, some of my patterns or, or reuse a lot of my, my code, I guess, reuse my copy pasta, which isn't always the greatest at times. So awesome. I'm, uh, sounds fun. Uh, I hope you get it done. It, it's, it's awesome. Once you get a pipeline going, pipelines are, uh, kind of hard to wrap your head around and it's kind of hard unless you have an example, but once you get it stood up and deploying, it's, it's super fun. Uh, nice. First, no, you weren't king. You weren't first. You weren't first. You weren't first. Uh, Deep Dragon. Hey, I haven't heard the name again in a while. How's it going? Uh, hey, hope everyone's great. I do too. I do too. Uh, SME, SME Productions. I'm going to say SME for subject matter expert. I'm just going to say it. Uh, I don't know if it stands for that, but I'm going for it. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Uh, Lesser Train. Woot. Hey, all can't stay for long. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sme, nice break between wrestling events. Wrestling? Uh, are you wrestling? <laughs> I assume. I assume maybe maybe pro wrestling. I don't know. College wrestling or or maybe kids. You have kids and you're at a wrestling match or a meet. A meet, I guess I should say. Uh, well, uh, thanks for thanks for taking a break. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, definitely not first. A lot of first. A lot of lot of lot of pleasantries. Let's see. Uh, Trevor, I did see that. I did see that. Let's see. Deep Dragon, Tim, I'm currently working on installing XCPNG, uh, one of the four used Dell 730s I just bought. Wow. So you have four Dell 730s. Wow. That is awesome. Um, you, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's quite a bit. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of compute. <laughs> oh, and if you hear noises too, that sounds like I'm farting or something. <laughs> it's not. Uh, Nano's in here, my dog Nano, and he snores loud and, and it, it kind of sounds like a fart sometimes. So it's, it's not me. <laughs> it's, uh, it's my dog Nano. I promise. I promise. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, show proof if, uh, if he wakes up, he's, he's, he is in la la land. Uh, but awesome. You got four Dells. Uh, awesome. XCPNG. I don't know a ton about it other than, you know, hypervisor, Citrix, open source. Like I get it. Uh, I just haven't done a ton on it, but, uh, Sounds fun. Are you gonna are you gonna cluster them? Are you, what are you gonna run on that stuff? That's a lot of compute. That's a lot. Uh, Trevor, uh, I guess we could say that I'm working on Netcool the DevOps way. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. <laughs> or or I mean, yeah, the DevOps way. Or but at some point, I mean, I I think those two are gonna merge. I I think that like DevOps as a as a role, um, you know, is, is changing. It's changing all the time to where, you know, you don't may or may not, depending on how your teams are formed at work, need a dedicated DevOps person. It might just be, hey, now that this thing is code, it's the engineers who do the configuration because they can they, they can configure it in code and push it up. And so I see that role changing a lot depending on who you talk to or depending on where you work, that that role is sometimes just becomes a function of another team and obviously i mean obviously you still need what they do to do other things you know i think it get roll roll i think that sometime rolls into reliability and doing more uh metrics and monitoring stuff like stuff that often gets neglected then they can focus on that so i, I don't know it just depends on on where you are but awesome awesome hey uh hecta thanks for the fall uh appreciate it welcome uh let's see uh music driver 
I'm here because I'm restructuring my infrastructure. Awesome. Now on paper, uh, but work is coming soon. But I might have some questions tonight. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah, start with paper. It's it's a lot easier to to start all over with paper. I you know digital paper or whatever. But if you start with diagrams or something like that, yeah, I would. Uh, uh, I, I I'm all for that. And I, I'm actually all for paper too. Like as you're starting, like scrap paper, paper or napkins, whatever. Uh, I'm 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 all for that even before going digital with a diagram uh, because what pencil and paper helps you do is remove that barrier on how to use the tool how do you do this how do you connect lines how do I get the font bigger you know all those things that people struggle with with tools then I I, I certainly do especially new tools if new hotness is out I'm like yeah I want to try this tool I spend more time trying to figure out how to use the tool than getting the ideas out of my head so I'm a huge fan of pen and paper if if uh, if uh, that's if that's what you're into too. Um, Menanga, thanks for the follow, appreciate it. Welcome, uh, Takano. This laser is a beast compared to the old one. Way nicer machine with lots of new but incredibly useful features compared to the old one. A cut that would take five minutes takes 55 seconds <laughs> with this one. That is awesome. I I saw that. I saw that in in Discord. You posted it. Uh, the new laser for your school, I think. Unless you're talking about your own, you got a, your own, but I think your school got one too. So that is awesome, man. I want to see it in action. I want to see it in action if you if you can record it at some point. I'd love to see it. Jenna Ryan uh, cleared the snow from the driveway, now setting a up a new Open Gear serial console. I have no idea what Open Gear serial console is. I have no clue. I would say <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, a, I understand what a serial console is. Uh, usually for network devices or for now I've used them for containers and stuff like that too to send commands or to see the output but I don't know what open gear uh, serial console is but anyways uh, glad you cleared the snow it's it's uh, it, it was a heavy one for me it was a heavy one uh, cyber night uh, this is that kind of can you engrave metal with the laser I think it's I think it's wood but it could be wrong could, could be wrong uh, I need to set up something for like that in my network for sure uh, zero, zero signal. Thanks for the fall. Appreciate it. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see. Uh, get, get aided, get aided. I'm saying get aided. Uh, in the same boat, been building GitLab in my home lab. Uh, keen to hear from Tim. Has he explored GitLab? Also, why use GitLab over GitHub? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I have. I, I have videos on GitLab and I have videos on GitHub and GitHub Actions. So, uh, yeah, I've used both. I actually still use both. Uh, to this day. Uh, so do I self-host the full GitLab? No, I don't. Uh, is it because uh, I'm I'm scared about my code like going away and me possibly not backing up? Uh, kind of, sort of. I don't know. Anyway, so I, I have code in both GitHub and GitLab. I use them both all the time. I use GitHub Actions when I'm in GitHub and I use GitLab uh, runners when I'm in, uh, when I'm in GitLab and, uh, I self-host both, of, both of those runners. So when I push code up to, you know, public GitHub or public GitLab, although private code, um, it triggers, uh, the, 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 the CI CD pipelines to run within my, my cluster. And so it does the code builds or whatever it needs to do there locally. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I've used them both. Uh, is you know is 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 one better than the other? That that's up to you to decide. Uh, and they, they both do a lot of the same things. I will say that GitLab has 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 provided a lot of free stuff a lot longer than GitHub. Uh, and I th I truly feel if if GitHub didn't have that competition, they might still be charging for private repos. But I'm glad uh, they don't anymore. And so that's that's uh, a benefit you get with with both private repos. You both get CI. Uh, a limited amount of minutes and that's why a lot of people spin up their own runners is so that they don't have to use shared infrastructure that has time limits on those runs and so they'll, they'll self-host those runners in their own environment once it gets into your own environment though that's where you can start uh you know i don't want to say cheating but you can start relying on some services inside of your environment or endpoints inside of your environment to do things that you couldn't if you were doing in the public. So I, I see a lot of people do this. They'll self-host GitLab, GitLab runners. And during that, you know, runner phase, they'll actually call out to something local on their network, you know, either either to push a container up or to, to, to trigger Terraform or whatever. And they'll do it all local, even though your code might not be stored local. 
Um, but then there's the, hey, I'll self-host the whole thing. And that's where you get into, yeah, GitLab's great for that because you get both CI, CD, you get your runners, as well as your code repository and all the other things that come with open source free stuff. And then there's also like, and then people say, well, I don't even want GitLab. I'll, I'll do, you know, Git T and, and Drone. And where I think drones change some of their licensing lately still is, is an option. So anyways, I have explored it a lot. <laughs> I use, I use both daily, both daily. Uh, and I use CI and CD all the time at work, at home, you, you name it. So I have pipelines running all the time, push some code to production on a Saturday morning for work. <laughs> uh, because there were, there were some errors that were kind of, kind of due to something I did last night, but, uh, not really, not really, <laughs> but yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome. I've, um, I have some content on it. It's, it's sprinkled throughout. Like I like the video I just did on Terraform plus GitHub actions. I use GitHub actions in the cloud to do that. So yeah, you, you have so many options. Uh, but yeah. Uh, noise Marine, uh, what I'm doing is replacing my Unify access points with MicroTik ones uh, and updating my documentation in the lab or of the lab. I uh, just finished printing a custom fan mount for my HPE server. Man, you got so many things, go awesome things going on. So uh, some new MicroTik access points, awesome, sounds fun. Updating documentation, always fun. Always kind of a, a nice way to like take a break from solving problems and, and use, you know, your creativity, if if you will, um, and and getting that documented is always a good thing. I'm a huge fan of, of of documentation in general. That's why I'm a huge fan. Also, is you know infrastructure's code because that becomes your documentation. But anyways, um, and then uh, 3D printing custom fan mounts for servers. I mean, <laughs> sounds like a great day for you. Uh, yeah, sounds like a great day. One day, maybe I'll get a 3D printer. Everyone keeps razzing me or pointing me to all these new models that keep coming out and say, maybe this is the one for you, which I appreciate. Keep pinging me in Discord with when uh, new new uh, printers come out. Uh, but I keep saying the longer I wait, the better they get. <laughs> uh, I'm waiting for diminishing returns to kind of catch up because it seems like they're all like leapfrogging. But maybe eventually they'll, they'll, uh, I, I, I actually, I hope not. I hope there's no diminishing returns. I hate, I hope on, on waiting. I hope that they just keep getting better and better and better and better and not incremental, incrementally better. Maybe we're there already. I don't know. Uh, Jay Greentree. Hello, uh, Trevor. Uh, I wanted to have my code, uh, for net cool staying on my domain. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And if you, if you self host that stuff, even if you self host just the runners, you can absolutely do it. Uh, let's see, Takano, uh, I'm able to do add an anodized, uh, metals and potentially others using Senmark. I just haven't given it a shot yet due to cost. So I can, I guess you can do more than wood. All right. <laughs> uh, Dr. Cuddle, how's it going? SSOing everything. Awesome. So, wow, you are beyond just authentication. Now you're doing single sign on. That is, that is awesome. I, I haven't been there yet. I haven't been there yet. I haven't done single sign on stuff. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's awesome. Don't get me wrong. I just, I haven't done a ton of it. I, you know, I'll, I'll use OAuth providers and sign in that way. Uh, but it is super cool when you have single sign in and then you can just visit all these sites depending on your provider and be automatically signed in. Cause you're signed in somewhere and you have a cookie from them. So awesome. Uh, nice. I may hit you up on discord. All right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Sound fixed. All right. Budney, Budney, I'm looking to get a NAS or building one just for backing up. Can't make my mind on the direction I want to go. Uh, Budney, yeah, yeah, you have a you have a lot of options. You have a lot of options. I mean, if you want a full featured general purpose NAS, uh, you know, True NAS, I think is a is a is a popular one that that, that uh, many people in this channel and in our Discord community use. Uh, and it's super popular. So there there's an there's kind of an easy one. Obviously, it has, you know, some hardware requirements and uses ZFS. You don't have to, but it does. Um, so there's an option, um, you know, because then you could get NFS or SMB and then you could say, OK, my backups are going to go to NFS or I'm going to do SCPs or whatever you want to do. 99.9% .9 of the time, TrueNAS is going to have some kind of service that you could use that you could hook into. Uh, but if you're looking to just back up, say, virtual machines or, or something else, there's, you know, there's there's PBS, Proxmox Backup uh, Solution. And there there are other things. There are other there are all kinds of things out there. Uh, but if you go with a general purpose NAS, you, you get more than just backups. So, yeah, it's uh, I'd, I'd love to see what you're uh, what you're thinking about for sure. 
Uh, Jay, Jay Green Tree, been some crazy weather this weekend today. It certainly has. It, it certainly has. This 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 cold front coming through, butted up against the warm front, uh, created uh, havoc for a lot of the Midwest and Southwest, uh, for sure. That's for sure. Music driver, hello, uh, Cyber Knight. Uh, a lot of friends look to have motorcycle parts engraved uh, with desing or desing. Uh, chrome plates or powdered coat reason i was asking yeah that, that, that is true yeah that, for sure uh smee uh, about to take my 16 year old daughter out for driving lessons since she legally has a permit shortly <laughs> oh man watch out where uh where uh where do you live again i'll be sure to two of us no i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm sure your daughter's gonna do fine it's gonna be fine i'm i'm sure it's it's gonna be more nerve-wracking for you than it is for her maybe maybe <laughs> But oh man, oh man. Uh, well, good luck. I'm sure she'll do fine. Uh, King Cam, uh, I have a Dell Power Edge T320 uh, hat only, has four cores, but has two sockets. So I'm able to add another CPU. Does anyone know if it's impossible, <laughs> impossible, maybe, uh, to install my Raspberry Pi 3 inside of it? <laughs> And technically have eight cores with Proxmox. I, I don't think so. I, I would love, I, I would love, yeah, I, that would be awesome. I don't think there's a way to just slot your 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 Raspberry Pi in there and then have more cores. Um, uh, mainly because they're different processor architectures and, and things like that. But I, I don't know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I highly doubt it though, if it has a separate socket. Because uh, that socket for the CPU is, is going to be, uh, that that socket on the board is specific about which cpus you plug into it and i don't know how you would get a raspberry pi inside of there i mean you might be able to rig one in and like power it up but they're gonna be two different systems sounds awesome though sounds awesome yeah it would be it would be awesome to have a board that supported x86 and uh and uh, uh, uh arm in one like a Turing pi plus plus or something <laughs> Brandon Earing, we made it. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. How's it going, man? Uh, Trevor, uh, I might hit you up for uh, help with getting CICD working, if that's all right with you. Sure, yeah. Throw it throw it in our automation channel. There's tons of people who have already did this, too. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I can uh, I can throw out some ideas, too. I haven't done a full... Like I said, I, I, I haven't... I, I'm not... I should say I'm not currently running a full self-hosted GitLab instance. I'm only hosting the runners right now. And uh, I, I keep my code and private repos there as well as github but yeah uh sludgy snowman time yeah it is it is it is sloppy out there here for sure and it, now it's like you know 40 degrees and everything's kind of melting so i i made sure that i was able to clear up the sidewalk so hopefully by evening it'll the uh, sidewalks will be dry uh nsg panda uh what are you working on uh, I, 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 I kind of talked about what i'm working on a little bit uh i'm currently setting up a minecraft cluster system tested with around 200 players and a ram usage of 60 gigs of memory and 48 threads that is awesome that is awesome minecraft cluster i i i need to set something up like that at some point in time because uh i i've done single single you know minecraft worlds or a minecraft server and uh even created multiple servers but i've never had them clustered i, di I didn't know that minecraft itself could could cluster and i'm sure there's a way because how else would Microsoft or Mojang be doing it when you have a hundred bajillion people all joining one server? I mean, of course they have caps on it, but I, I'd love to see this. I'd love to see it. I need to I need to Google this for sure because I'd love to see it. Uh, get aided. <laughs> I don't know if it's get aided, but I'm gonna say it is. Uh, anyone using Nextcloud? Any good comparisons? Uh, I used Nextcloud for a little while. A little while. I was uh, I I was liking it at first because it gave me kind of a self-hosted. Uh, Google Drive experience that I was kind of looking for, um, and then uh, then I kind of stopped. I don't know. I should go back to it, but it was it was great for hey, uh, uh, like a drive like experience or a Dropbox like experience, especially for self hosting files that you want to share with people privately that it, you know that exceed what email itself uh, you could attach with, and and you know for files you don't want to put in Drive anyways. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Uh, let's see, Cyber Knight, uh, we got uh, we got your snow as rain. We have three feet in the yard, so a blessing. Lol. Wow, still have three feet in. Oh, you mean of the snow? I was like, of rain? That is not good. <laughs> yeah, it, ours started out as as rain, and it started out as rain. And it was raining for for a while, 
Then it started hailing, which I thought, oh, cool. You know, our first like thunderstorm. Here it comes and I heard some thunder. Then all of a sudden it started like sleeting and then snowing. And then it was a whiteout for like hours. I was like, wow. And then uh, all the trees were covered, you know, and then, uh, and then, you know, it, it, it was out of control. But yeah, I, oof. <laughs> I'm kind of over it. I mean, it's it's April 1st now, so I'm 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 over it. But I know that in Minnesota, especially, you know, it's it snowed on May 1st many years here. Many years of being here, it snowed on May 1st, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> come on! This is like chipping into spring, and I really like spring. I'm not a fan of summer. <laughs> I'm not a fan of summer. I just I just don't like being hot when I go outside, and I don't like running air conditioning all the time. I like having the windows open. Speaking of, I've had the windows open my office for about a month now. And even in my bedroom, <laughs> open a little bit. Guy at work thinks I'm crazy. Uh, I'm like, no, man, I, I like fresh air. I like my face being cold when I go to sleep. <laughs> it's it's nice. Um, oh, sorry, skip that one. Uh, Takano, uh, have you seen the recent development of Folia? It's a fork of paper spigot, and they have managed to get seven, 370 players concurrently at uh, 20 TPS. Oh, no, I haven't, so I'll have to look at it. So spigot is the, paper spigot is the one I've heard you talk about before, but not folia, not folia. Uh, Jay Green Tree uh, had strong storms, tornadoes over the, uh, over this direction last night. Very long, uh, long nights with little sleep. I bet, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's weird how these storms come at night a lot. I, I feel like they do, and, that, and that's like the worst time they could come because people are sleeping and not ready for it. I, I feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong or maybe it's, I don't know, uh, um, anecdotal, but I feel like a lot of times when, when those types of storms, storms come, they're always at night, you know? Uh, but uh, glad you made it. If you're here, that means you're okay. <laughs> Get aided. We got soggy here, Tim. Sunday is a wet morning. So Sunday, ooh, it's not Sunday here, it's Saturday. Uh, but uh, it's, it, it's a snowy morning here. Uh, oh, yes, but not so got uh, the world generating stuff. Oh, you're talking about... Okay, this is going into uh, into the bucket of uh, Minecraft Minecraft servers. Um, Let's see. Uh, nice Grafana sticker. Oh, you noticed. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I, I used to be a fan of putting, like, stickers all over my laptop. And then I realized that, like, man, someone's got to peel those off when I take it back. And so I stopped doing that, and so I started putting stickers all over my water bottles. And I've already filled up my other water bottle with stickers from companies I've worked at or, you know, things I've contributed to or open source, you know, repos or, or uh, uh, conferences I've been to. So I started filling up my next one. So this one, you know, I, I have an Apple sticker on there uh, just because I was like, hey, I, I have a bajillion of these. I'll stick it on somewhere. Uh, traffic. A Discord one, and yeah, Grafana. They sent me, uh, they sent me uh, not only some stickers but a T-shirt too. When I did that video on Grafana, they reached out and said, "Hey, let's let's, uh, you want some stuff?" I was like, "Yeah, I want some stuff." <laughs> uh, but yeah, so thank you. Yeah, it's um, it's awesome. It's awesome. Oh yeah, and then there's the other Grafana down here, down below. But yeah, I I, I put them on my water bottles now, and I, I'm a huge fan of Nalgene's. I don't I don't know if you guys use Nalgene's, but uh, I I don't need any additional like apparatuses on top and like straws and all that stuff nothing against just not for me i like less moving parts so for me and algene this is perfect and then plus i know how much you drank all day anyways uh let's see uh ooh, niana uh thanks for follow appreciate it zero signal thanks for follow appreciate it and i said the one before but hey thanks for the follow appreciate it but yeah uh grafana awesome you guys know grafana but uh Awesome, they sent me uh, uh, not only a sticker, but also a t-shirt that I wear sometimes. Um, let's see, oh, you guys are talking about Minecraft. All right, let's see, let's see. Uh, recognized, uh, around five second delay of real stream and real stream uh, from your wall. I will ask questions later. Yeah, it, there, there is a delay, watch, there's a delay. Yeah, oh, that one, and then the other one, maybe? Oh, TV. Yeah, there two. <laughs> there's two streams going on. Well, you know, to you guys, it's three. To me, it's two. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zoid. I was thinking of creating some Terraform for the free tier VMs for public clouds. Hopefully, then when I'm done, everyone can quickly get to a cloud. Yep, they don't. They won't have to pay for it. Maybe useful for uptime monitoring or for a blog. Yeah, I, I hear you, man. I'm right there with you. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> that sounds uh, sounds awesome. 
Uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's see. Trevor, lickety split it. My eyes. Yeah, I, I think I think lickety was the one that changed it to light mode. I think so. Uh, Loggy Life, uh, just updating my Proxmox nodes. Awesome. So uh, if you're saying updating, that means you don't have the latest update, which the latest update gives you dark mode. So there's another reason to keep them up to date. Oh, are yeah, you killing me? All right, I'm just going to be like this. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, speaking of, how are you liking the new Proxmox dark mode? I can't see the thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Get, change it to whatever color you want. Uh, I wouldn't have a, a, a light theme if I if I didn't believe in it. I don't know. I, I figured it, people would use light and dark to troll me. And dark's not a full dark because those ones back there <laughs> are being triggered. I think that I think that was uh, here. Let me check. Let me check because I have a button panel right here that I can easily uh, I can easily change. Yeah, it was dark mode. Okay, so these go off. Maybe that'll work. Maybe this will maybe this will work. Yeah, it does. I know what's going on. All right. I say that every time, but meh. Firewall rule. It's not DNS this time. Uh Geek Rant. Oh. Speak going back real quick. Jade Green Tree. I love uh I love the new Proxmox Dark Mode. It's a little bit different than the Discord theme, but I'm cool with it. I I will use the first class, you know, native dark mode over that one. Nothing against that one. It gave my eyes plenty of relief for 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 the year i used it but uh now i'm on to i'm i'm, I'm on the main train now <laughs> uh geek random i plan on using portainer to manage some docker containers awesome yeah i love it is there a way to make vms and proxmox so that i don't have to shut down one and lose all services yeah see so so now you're getting into how do i make my services highly available <laughs> that's that's kind of what you're going for right there i assume Ooh, there's a, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways. And I feel like if I start talking about them, what we're doing is we're, we're trying to recreate Kubernetes, but I'll, I'll start uh, super high level real quick. So, so there, th yes, there are ways. One, you can have two virtual machines on both running the same service. Hopefully they're not stateful, meaning they don't have local state. They connect to a database or something else for its state. And then you put a load balancer in front of them. That'll work, right? The next way is, since you mentioned containers, you could do the same thing with Docker, right? You spin up two machines, you have two containers or three or four machines with that same container going all across them. Hopefully those aren't stateful, most likely they're gonna be, but hopefully they're not stateful, uh, meaning they have local state inside of them or they have uh, local storage attached to them or storage in general attached to them. I'm gonna take that out for now, just say they are. Then you put a load balancer in front, like keep alive D, and then you're good to go. Same thing. But now I, I feel like both of those scenarios are, are, are recreating what, what Kubernetes can do for you. I shouldn't say what it does because it does many things, but Kubernetes can do the same thing for you. In Kubernetes, you create a pod, you can scale those replicas. So each one replica, you can scale it up from one to a million. Uh, even more, there's no limit. You're only limited by your resources. And then you have a load balancer or a service in front of it. And that does it for you. So three ways to do it. Uh, you know, one plain VMs, one containers, one with Kubernetes, all kind of the same idea done with different technologies. Uh, but they all depend on you not having stateful services, which if you, if, if you can think about stateful services, just think like, hey, is there anything within this container that's holding some kind of state? Let's say it's like a session, or I'll just keep it easy. Say it's a counter. And every time someone visits that 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 pod or that container or that VM, the counter goes up. So if you have someone hit the load balancer, go to this one, the counter goes up to one, but then the next time it hits the load balancer, goes to this one, the counter is now one. Now they're they're equal, but the next time someone comes to one, the counter is two. And so now this pod or this container, this VM says, hey, I'm at two and this is, I'm at one and you have split brain scenario basically. And uh, that is just, I guess, <laughs> an illustration of, 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 of stateful services. So in general, what you wanna try to do, if, if you are gonna be serious about HA stuff, get that state out of there. Maybe have a database that they both connect to. And that, those services read from that database. So as someone visits this one, 
says the counter goes up to two or we're at three now, writes to the database. Well, and this one's reading from the database, so this one's up to date immediately. And so that's that's kind of a uh, high level <laughs> what you want to do. Long story short, uh, you can do it. There are multiple ways, but uh, I think I think that the, the biggest challenge isn't, isn't networking, it's not Kubernetes, it's not any of that. It's the service that you use needs to be stateless, meaning that it doesn't keep its own state. Its state is sourced from somewhere else. And a lot of the times, if, if, if you're running, you know, these containers that are like like Plex or, or like Uptime Kuma, they're they're 100 stateful. They're 100 stateful. There's nothing you can do about it. You could scale them up all you want, and it's not doing you any good. It's actually doing you harm <laughs> because of the scenario I just described. They're not architected in a way that they can scale. But if you think of things like, hey, uh, nginx, you know, a little web container, or Apache web server that has static HTML in there, and it's never changing, and it doesn't even need external state if it's just static web pages. You could scale that thing to a thousand. It doesn't matter which one they land on. You're good. So anyways, I, I don't mean to dive too deep, uh, but uh, I, I, like I said, you could do it those three ways I talked about. But but at the end of the day, one of the requirements in order to scale is going to be you need to have services that are stateless for sure, <laughs> for sure. OK, let's uh, let's uh, keep moving, keep moving, because I want to I want to try to keep on top of things a little bit. Uh, can we get a rundown of your code for the lights? I would be interested in doing something like that. Oh, a rundown. Uh, you just mean like what I did and what, what I'm doing? I can give you super high level, super high level. I write code. I put it in a container and I ship that container to my in my Kubernetes cluster. That's only internal. That only internal Kubernetes cluster can connect to Home Assistant or it can connect directly to my Philips Hue API, or it can connect directly to like a broad link device that kind of looks like this, although there's a different one back there. Um, and and uh, it can trigger things. And so um, what I had to do is write a whole bunch of code, figure out the Hue API, figure out Home Assistant API, figure out how to write code against this broad link thing that I actually created a Docker container for because it's so complex. Um, and, then, and then on top of that, <laughs> So I have those services and those services then live inside of a Twitch bot. So I run a bot that is connected to my Twitch channel, again, running in my Kubernetes cluster and listens for events. And when it sees an event like, hey, someone redeemed dark mode, I execute a series of commands that I call dark mode, which is turn off all of the, the lights from Philips Hue and then tell the broad link device, hey, turn off your lights, which is obviously not working exactly right now because that should be blue back there. But from a high level, that's what it does. And so I started creating microservices. To, this is getting too far because at home, it's like, wow, really? Microservices at home? I did start creating microservices now so that any of my services can trigger light stuff or IoT stuff. And in the future, what I'm going to do is now that I have Home Assistant back up and in Kubernetes and running stable, uh, is I'm going to actually write code against the, the the Home Assistant API so I don't need to learn five APIs. Anyways, that's that's how it works from a high level. Um, code's not public, nor I, I, I don't think I'll ever share it. Uh, it's, it's not great uh, and or good, uh, but um, high level. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dark mode for the win. All right. I had to turn the blue on back there because I realized they're, they're not working the way they should. Random earring. What did I do this week? Upgraded the middle fans on my 826 chassis. I saw that. Uh, the 3D printed cases for them fit awesome. Minus the tab I had <laughs> had to be cut off. But I thought I would I could cut 100 infill with scissors since it was at night when my wife and kiddos were sleeping. One stabbed me. I I I I, I think I caught wind of that. I I mean I saw I saw your uh, in uh, I saw in the whole lab uh, uh, um, forum. We have a forum in Discord. Uh, your pictures, and you were adding to the story, and I saw it. But then I also remember you saying last night you were you were burned out and didn't want, <laughs> didn't want to do any kind of service stuff. I don't know. I'm I'm mixing my stories and maybe even my people. But hey, uh, I hope your finger's okay. I hope I hope it heals in time for you to to do some more stuff this weekend. But good to see you, man. Also, yeah, sweet logo in Discord. I I saw you did your logo change too. Looks sweet. I like it. Simple, simple. Just like, just, 
just like the trode bar used to be so Chicano, oh you guys are, you got all right you guys uh, uh talking about minecraft uh this is i think a thread who knows with twitch uh for us just a friend server with eight players concurrently at peak hours that is awesome i i, I love running game servers and well one i would absolutely love running a game server where people played with me <laughs> but that doesn't happen too often but i also love it running game servers that people i don't even know are just playing on and i and i don't care i, I just find joy out of people like using my services that's that's half the reason why i self-host i mean more than half the reason why i self-host stuff uh not because i i i I, I, th I think it's cool don't get me wrong i think it's cool i love having a public service being out there at the same time I, I i need in order for me to be excited about it and to can you to continue to develop it and uh, host it i love it when people use it and so it's that combination of people using stuff where i'm just like wow that is awesome uh stab wound later <laughs> and a broken scissor lol <laughs> that is done <laughs> uh and updated zeons to lower power ones uh to save some juice yeah i'm all, I'm all about saving some juice yeah I, I i uh i use some juice so i need to save some juice too <laughs> uh, uh. uh to kind of need to get uh crowd sec up with npm though uh i got it set up with open sense but i need to add it to my public facing services yeah you do yeah you do man crowd sick for sure for sure uh let's see uh jay sizzle jay sizzle uh having to rebuild my home assistant vm too many headaches uh with it as of late oh that that stinks well hopefully you have your config backed up that should make it a little bit easier or you have the whole this is why <laughs> this is why sometimes i don't like backing up the whole vm because even if you restore it you might restore a bad state so i'm, I'm a big fan of uh only backing up the things you can't recreate and not the whole entire thing. Anyways, I'll get off my soapbox. Hopefully you have the config backed up and not just the VM because you're in a state right now where you have to keep rebuilding the VM and sometimes just going clean and then, uh, and then, uh, yeah, applying that config is, is, is nice. Anyways, uh, yeah, I, I used to be there, but my, my home assistant's pretty stable, <laughs> stable for Kubernetes. There, that, that should be its own title. It, it's, it's running pretty stable for Kubernetes. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I, 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 I dread ever having to rebuild it. And I did have a little mishap they, like they do their Docker tags weird. They do them basically like date releases. And so it's, it's hard for me to pin to those and like use flux for GitOps with those because because they, 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 they do, they don't use semantic versioning. They use their own kind of product versioning and that product versioning is based on date. So eh, anyways, anyways, I hope you get it figured out. Uh, cause, uh, yeah. Home assistant is uh, super fun. It's super fun. Uh, music driver. Yep. Doing some network restructure. All right. I feel now myself in trouble, uh, interfaces much more the number of it. Yeah. I, I, I know what you mean. Uh, sometimes I get uh, super confused on interface stuff. I was doing some PFSense stuff last night and the night before. And w when you start virtualizing PFSense, then you're really like, whoa, okay, this interface is this virtual interface that's connected to this, you know, this, this network bridge that's also virtual and somehow i need physical things to connect to it i don't know i i, I feel your pain I, i'm kind of going through the same like exercise <laughs> the last couple of days with pfsense and uh and 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 actually virtualizing it too so i i hear you uh random earring yeah it was my first and only because i've been moving the basement around for the kiddos to make room for the playroom toys when you say playroom toys you mean servers right yeah that's what I, that's what i'm talking about kiddo three coming oh maybe not require some moving uh some moving the house around haha <laughs> yeah and and then the kiddos toys that's that's what you should uh, just name your server room the toy room and so you could be like tell your wife hey i'm i'm gonna start working on the toy room <laughs> and it's all your stuff Awesome, kiddo three coming, man. Yeah, man, you're switching to zone defense. I hear, I hear that's kind of hard. But then again, I hear when, it, when after two, it's kind of, kind of, I don't know. It's it's incremental, <laughs> the changes and 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 how much you 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 relax your rules. Uh, anyways, I don't know because I don't have kids. Uh, main main kula main kula mitan. I'm sorry if I I slaughtered that name. Uh, I want a home lab. I was thinking in NUC, but I would like to have something that fits in a server rack. Any ideas? Maybe super micro. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, oh, man, there's a, there's a ton you can do. And, and, uh, yeah, NUCs are great. NUCs are great. I, I have four NUCs, one old one 
and then three uh, 12th gen ones that are that are awesome. And so I have, I have three so I can still do a low power cluster, which is awesome. I mean, I, I, I know that I, I love rack mounting stuff. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> so what I ended up doing, and this is this is not the cheap route, but uh, I ended up buying three Intel NUX and then a rack mount uh, 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 shelf for those three NUX to fit in there. So you have so many options. So if you if you want to go like server one use stuff, I'm I'm a fan of I'm a fan of uh, super micro stuff. Uh, you can usually find it uh, fairly reasonably priced, but then you're always going to have options like like you know Dell and Dell and HP and name your other you know huge manufacturer of servers. You can find those relatively cheap sometimes too. Um, but you know it depends depends on what you want to do I, I i hate that answer uh for me personally uh, I'll, I'll talk about what i did so yeah uh super micro one use i love them they're fantastic zero problems i have zero complaints yeah zero complaints i was trying to think can i complain about one thing like i gotta complain about one thing but no and then uh then i've done another one you that is my three intel next bought a specialized one you uh rack mount fantastic then I've also done customized uh, one use servers too, which are a little bit harder to find, but uh, but you could build uh, out uh, you know a custom basically like a PC as a server and put it in a, in a conversion you know rack mount uh, uh, case or something like that. But lots of options, lots of options. Uh, Deep Dragon, uh, there is a Terraform provider for a lot of things that are just kind of, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Someone on Twitter told me, hey, have you checked out the, you know, the Terraform provider for Pi-hole? I was like, ooh, like, <laughs> like, I didn't even consider that. I did, that was not even on my radar. And then you're like, yeah, but it, but it makes sense. It makes sense though, and it's, uh, it's definitely going to be something I want to do. And even even if I don't use it that often, what it does give me is is you know if I use Terraform and Terraform State, what it does give me is a great backup of all my DNS records <laughs> every time I run it. So so that's pretty cool too. So I I think I might try it out. That's it's it's definitely crossing the strings between you know enterprise and totally for home. But uh, I, I I think I'm gonna try it out honestly because you know right now I I'm just deploying you know DNS records to one of my machines. Oh, the benefit. Okay, so then someone also said, hey, you can also do this too. So anyways, the way I currently do it is I have uh, I have Pi-hole running and then I have Gravity Sync syncing to two other DNS servers. So I'll make a DNS change in DNS server one and then within 15 minutes, 15 minutes at the most, it will, you know, those other two DNS servers will pull records and synchronize it, which, which it works fine, it works fine. But, uh, you know, I have to wait up to 15 minutes. I usually don't think about it. Actually, I plan accordingly. Anytime I know I need a DNS record, I'll do it before I even reserve the IP address because I know, like, or well, I, that depends if it's a C name or not. Anyways, I'll, I'll know the IP address in my head, but I'll go and set it up in, in DNS first, and then I'll go and reserve it. And then by the time I'm going to actually use it, it'll be there. But the cool thing, if I, if I did this with Terraform, I wouldn't have to wait for that gravity sync to pull and you know basically i'll quote unquote we'll call it replicate uh wouldn't have to you know replicate those records to my other dns servers i could just hit the api on all three dns servers at once with terraform and it'll update all the records automatically not automatically but at the same time in parallel or serial but close enough uh so, which is pretty awesome because then i'm like okay well then i don't need gravity sync to, to to sync those records across you know that my c names and my a records so Pretty cool stuff you can do. It's it's it definitely it, it's it's like the definition of home lab using something enterprise with something that is 100% like you know home use. So I don't know, and it, and it's cool too that that I will say it is super cool that Pihole actually has an API to do this because without an API it wouldn't be possible. I mean you could probably hack it in a, a bajillion ways, um, but it, but it's zero hacks because it's using their API and Pihole in their Pihole's. Uh, you know, HTTP API. They've exposed ways to to change, update. They basically created CRUD, create, read, update, delete uh, for, for C names and for DNS records. So I don't know, pretty cool. So I, I think I'm gonna do it. I just, I need some free time and then I'll definitely do it. Um, Gedated, Tim, 
when you updated Proxmox, did you enable the test repo uh, to catch the 7.4 updates? Yeah, I, I always do. Uh, the 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 unstable repo or whatever they call it. Yeah, I I always do, um, because <laughs> not because I like living on the edge. Because I um, I don't know why. Because I want updates faster. So, uh, but yeah, I do. I do. I know. I, I, maybe it's not good, but I get security updates and stuff faster. Um, and maybe I'm just fooling myself, and I could wait until you know they're officially released. Uh, but yeah, I I have them turned on. I, I, I haven't been burned by that in version seven or version six. The only time I got burned by having the, the, the beta updates or the, the fast ring, or I forget what they call it. Basically the, the, the beta updates turned on was way back in the 5.0 days, ever since six and ever since seven, like those are super duper stable. So. Which, which is a good thing. Uh, that may not always be the case. Might not be the case for you and your hardware, but for me, I, I, I don't even think twice anymore. <laughs> but if you're doing it in production, don't. I mean, I, I'm, I'm talking about this is my stuff at home. If I break something, you know, I'm not going to have someone yelling at me. Well, maybe. <laughs> I might. No guarantees. But, you know, this this isn't in my production environment at work or anything like that. This is this is me at home with Proxmox. <laughs> so, so I haven't turned on. Uh, DGD, uh, DGD, uh, let's see. My current project is creating an internal root CA and using it with step CA. Awesome. I'm progressing very slowly because I destroy and redo everything constantly to make sure I'm familiar with everything. Uh, and there are no mistakes at all. Not to expose anybody, not to expose anybody from my family to danger since the root CA cert will be deployed in all our devices in a trusted root store. I like it. I like it. Yeah, that is uh, that is that is interesting. Um, I do have a couple of questions. So 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 awesome building root CA uh, with step CA. So you have your internal uh, certificate authority, so that you can create your own certificates, and then on top of that, you're 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 importing that that root CA or that certificate you generated on all of your devices. So all of your devices can trust that 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 root ca that you have internally which is which is awesome that is awesome and you're right there is some risk there that hey you know if something goes wrong or you use the wrong certificate and you trusted the wrong one accidentally on all these devices now whatever someone could decrypt that that communication that you didn't expect but it sounds like you're going down the right path and doing the right things and taking it slow and and doing uh, you know, you're you're doing your due diligence, which I think is awesome. I am curious though, how, how you how you get this to work on like devices, like like mobile devices, like I, on iOS. I get it. You can import certificates. Android devices, you can import certificates too. But like, what about like you know TVs and stuff like that? You know, I wonder wonder if and how that can be handled. Um, because I I thought about going down that route, and this is why I ended up just saying, you know what, I'm I'm gonna get public certificates create my own, you know, internal subdomain. And then I just don't have to deal with that because my, my certificates are coming from a, tr a trusted public CA. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I don't have, I guess, some of the benefits you where you can swap them out really quick and do all this cool stuff. So anyways, awesome. I I'm curious to know, like, w like what happens when you run into a device that you can't import that, that certificate on? Cause that's, that, that was always my fear. Cause I have so many devices. I was just like, uh, you know, like TVs, you know, I was just like, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way, you know, like, uh, putting a, a, you know, a Plex cert on there. I guess I could tell it to ignore untrusted certificates. So I guess there are ways around it, but it sounds awesome. Sounds like a huge project. And I, I'd love to, uh, love to hear more music driver. Uh, I started my home lab with an AMD a 6,600 K already outgrew it. <laughs> Uh, but was fine for the first one. Just repurposed it. Yeah, I hear you. That's uh, that's the great thing about home labs. It's like you, 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 most of your stuff is is probably hand me downs from something else, and then when you're done with it, you can hand it down to something else too. It's it's like you know, it's uh, home labs to me are like you, you're like the uh, uh, the I don't know third kid or something, right? You're the third kid where you get everyone's clothes handed down to you, you know, but they're they're, they're still great for the time until they're not and then you can hand them down again to someone else who needs them so i, I i'm a huge fan huge fan uh christ christ live uh that's hard for me to say but hi 
<laughs> uh, Howlex, uh, pipeline is one thing, but always hold my breath under the post processes. Yeah, yeah, so post processes, so I, I assume, uh, yeah, yeah, when the things actually get deployed and happen, yeah, I, I, I hear you, I hear you. I, I'm, I'm, I've, I'm, I, I trust my stuff now to where, because I, what I try to do is build up any, you know, if it's code, try to write unit test or functional tests ahead of time, any linting or, or syntax checks ahead of time on the first step, you know, I, I basically vet that whole thing to where it doesn't even go on to the second step if it fails. And so by the time it gets to the actual deploy, the last step, I'm pretty confident it's going to work, <laughs> but yeah, no, there's always there's always that 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 chance that it won't but yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean oh uh, let's see why not esxi doing vsan between four servers yeah that's tough but it's it sounds awesome though i found it sounds awesome i would i would love to build or use a san at some point because they they sound awesome because i would love to like okay now i just have all these commute compute compute nodes and all of their storage is remote and so it's like sweet just have a fiber channel and like you know, have dedicated nodes that are compute only, and then they 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 get their disks basically from a vSAN. I I never really I've never really uh, been able to dive that deep into that tech. I would I would love to at some point, or at least like have someone show me how it works. Like I would love to be a fly on the wall while they're configuring it because it it's it's super cool tech, and I, I just haven't had experience with it at all, at all. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna hop around. I am going a little bit late. Um, I'm gonna go. Um, I'm I'm gonna look. Uh, oh, let's see. Uh, happy Saturday, Tim and Chat. I'm taking a deep dive into obscurities of Kubernetes. All right, there are lots of uh, obscurities. There there are a lot of there are a lot of dark corners in Kubernetes. I should say that a lot of dark unexplored corners, especially by me. I haven't explored all the corners of Kubernetes. Uh, even yesterday, I was I was uh, reading about uh, Kubernetes and and how their pod eviction works and how they have this process for determining uh, which pods get killed when you run out of memory, because there's a process. Uh, of course, it's defined. It's defined in code somewhere, and there's like these three tiers of of ways that things get killed based on how much memory they're using versus how much memory they've requested, and so. Kubernetes, uh, a, a good practice, they didn't, they won't say best practice, they'll say a good practice is to set your, you know, your, your, your resource request and your, your limits to the same. And I'm like, I've never heard that before, but maybe I'll start doing it. Anyways, there, there are so many things that like that in Kubernetes, once you start going down this rabbit hole, it, 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 it's hard to keep it all straight. So anyways, hey, um, I just want to say really quick, um, yeah, there, there are there. There's a lot of chat that I couldn't get to, um, so I apologize. Um, I will say though, um, here I'll do this last one. Music driver. You know, this is my last one. I apologize. Um, let's see. I uh, didn't see anyone asking anything similar, so I'll try now. Built my second Proxmox for play with. Uh, also built my first physical PF Sense hardware to NIC uh, one. Uh, so Ethernet. Uh, the Proxmox one with six Ethernet is WAN for virtual pfsense and one management interface for proxmox question is which way would be best one managed switch also available <laughs> wait hold on question is in new hardware to put uh, question is in which new hardware to put my new 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 network cards uh which way would be best one managed switch also available end goal is to dismiss the vir virtual pfsense version Ooh. Um, so which one would be best out of those two, uh, to put your new network cards in? Oh, that one's tough because there are a lot of acronyms in there and abbreviations. Um, built my first physical, um, tough. I, I'm going to say whichever one needs more Nicks. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I apologize. Um, if you, if you throw that into discord, we can, we can have a, a, a conversation about it. Uh, it seems like it's probably a. A, a little bit longer than I have time for now, so I apologize. Um, but I, I mean, in general, wh where would I put my new hardware? In the one that needs it, and maybe that's the best non-answer. But you know, if, if I'm running, you know, if I'm running PFSense and I do need more NICs either to connect to different switches or I want to dedicate them to very specific pieces of hardware or machines, that's where I'd throw it. 
But if you have everything you need out of it, I, I put it somewhere else. It's hard, like, because I have a lot of, you know, nicks laying around. And it's like, yeah, I, most of the time I need one unless I'm building a router. And then, I, you know, a router or a gateway. Then I, then I need a couple of more, at least two, most of the time. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, throw it in networking channel and we can chat about it. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that have a lot more experience than I do. Uh, talking uh, and would be able to speak to it uh, a lot more intelligently than I'm able to. So anyways, uh, hey, all thanks so much for tuning in. I went a little bit over and I do have to wrap it up uh, mainly because we have somewhere to go again. Uh, a friend who turned, oh, I won't say her age, you don't disclose people age. I have a friend whose birthday it is today and we're going to go visit them. Uh, but at the same time, they lost power from the snowstorm last night. So I don't know if it's happening. I'll know as soon as I get off the stream. But uh, either way, I think they're going to have the party either way. And uh, I think I know a guy that has at least five UPSs that could probably power most of their house for the entire time of the party. So I, I threw that out there to her husband. I was like, you know, I uh, I have a couple UPSs laying around if you need me to bring them. So that's might be what I'm doing is ripping out all my UPSs here and bring him over to his house. We'll see. We'll see. So anyways, hey, uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thank you so much. There were there were uh, follows. There were subs. There were resubs. Thank you all so much for it. I, I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, if you have uh, more questions or want to talk more or just want to like chit chat with people throughout the day or throughout the night, um, we have a Discord server that's full of people. It's over 8,000 people. I'd love for you to join. It's just discord.gg slash technotim, or you can find it in the links below or go to technotim.live or just use exclamation point Discord or just Google like technotim Discord server and I'm sure it's going to come back. And if you end up in someone else's Discord, I'm sorry, but uh, hopefully I got my SEO down now. So, uh, But anyways, um, yeah, thank you again. Thanks for, for everything. I will be in Discord probably later on tonight, uh, but if you ping me there or Twitter or wherever, I'll try to respond whenever I can. And uh, I will have something out for you this week. It's it's obviously going to be on that new device, but I have a couple of things I need to get working. One I absolutely cannot get working, and I want to ask people, but then it will spoil the surprise, and maybe it's not that much of a surprise. So anyways, I, I might throw something out in the hypervisor channels and I'll, I'll if you if you if you see it there it's that's what I'm working on so um but yeah uh and I will be back here next Saturday on Twitch same time 3 CST so thank you so much um have a great weekend uh hope you and I don't know hope the weather gets better because uh it, it's passed through the west and midwest now east coast I'm sorry if you get some of that because man that was that was pretty gnarly so Anyways, have a great rest of the day uh, and be good to each other. Take care, folks.